Okay, I'm back. Let's see if this is any better. Let me just find myself now. Sorry about that. We will see if this is going to be any better. Now I don't have a notification that I am um, on live. Fingers crossed it comes up. Oh, technology, don't you love it? Facebook has been difficult today. Oh. Alrighty, let's see if I can find myself. Here we go. Now it's going to tell me. Geez, better late than ever. Right. Sorry about my arms in the way. But I just wanted to uh, make sure you can see everything. The light's not that great today. I'm not sure how I can change that. You know, you think you've got everything set up and then I don't know what happens. Anyway, that's as good as it's going to get today. And I apologise if I keep... Um, Losing signal. I don't know what's to go with that today. But, right, I'm ready to play. Thank you for watching. If you're here, jump on, say hello. I'm going to be playing with these three stamp sets today. Jar of Flowers, Daisy Garden, and Art Gallery. And look, I already have my cards ready to go. And the reason I am playing with them is because part of what I'm making today is going to be for the 52 tags SU challenge and this week's theme is the letter D so I'm doing D for Daisy and I'm going to be using the Daisy Garden stamp set all right with along with the others so I have pre-prepared I actually made samples to follow along with today Get to them in a minute. A couple of punches that I'll be using the, the trio punch and the uh, two inch circle punch. I have some sketches again that I'm going to be using, and also the Harvest Meadow 12 by 12 inch designer series paper. So I'm going to make three cards sorry, three cards and a tag today. So, let's get going. Now, I used um, sketches last week. So, again, today I decided to use um, some more sketches. But I've gone way back to Becky's sketch maps from 2014. And I've just realised the camera is crooked. I'm sorry, I'm going to try and straighten that. But I could stuff it up, so hold tight. There we go. I think that's a bit better. No... Oi, oi, oi. Wait a minute. I have to wait for the screen to catch up because it's on a little bit of a delay. And I might move my whole stand forward a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to go for a ride. Alright, we'll see where that ends up. Hopefully it's all okay. Are you crooked? You're still a bit crooked. So which way do I need to go? Mm. That way. Is that making it worse? Yep, that's worse. Wrong way. And one last adjustment angle a little bit. I don't think I'm going to be able to change it. Alright, that's as good as it's getting today. Now I've done all that, I need a drink. Okay, I'm ready to go. Look at my messy desk. But if you watch me often enough, you'll know that I keep using my grid paper until you actually can't see much white anymore. <laughs> or until the ink that's on there transfers onto something I'm making and then it's time to change it. Alright, so I'm using the Becky Fleck card maps again today. I've gone back to 2014 and I have chosen three designs on here for the cards and one as inspiration for my tag. 
So this is the first one for the first card. The second one, the third one, and the tag. So let's do this first one. Now I already have the card, a card made, and I'm just going to recreate it. So here's the first one. And I'll put that next to the card design or the, um, the sketch, I should say. And I'm going to try and uh, arrange things so I've got some room. We all know what that's like. As you go along, you get less and less room. All right, so with this one, I'll be using some blends to colour in our flowers. And I have some things pre-stamped and pre-cut out to make it quicker so we're not here all day. So looking at the sketch... It's basically background paper, a strip of paper down the middle, a jar, some flowers and a sentiment and a little bit of twine they've got running down that middle section. So this is my card that I have created for this one. On my background, I've actually used the Daisy Garden stamp set in replace, sorry, in place of the designer series paper. Then I do have the strip of paper down the middle the jar and then a bunch of flowers out of the jar rather than just here down the side so it's pretty much a copy of the the sketch and I've just put my sentiment across the jar so I've got a sentiment here on the jar so I'm going to recreate that so let's get cracking now I've already stamped the jar and the flowers and they were from the jar of flowers stamp set so that's the jar that I used, the big jar that I used. And these flowers, which are probably meant to be sunflowers, which I think they are, but my theme today is D for Daisy for the Tags Challenge. So I go, well, they could also be daisies. But I've kept with the blue and yellow theme, as you can see on here. Right, so first thing we need to do is stamp our background. And for that, I'm going to use the Stamparatus because you get much more even platform, sorry, much more even pressure when you use the Stamparatus. Okay, so if you're not familiar with the Stamparatus, it has two platforms you can use at once. One on these hinges and one on these hinges. They don't close together, but you can all Altern alternate, that's the word, alternate them. So you can have a platform on here and then stamp with this one and then stamp with this one and it's great for if you're doing multiple um, cards the same. It comes with a foam pad which you use for the clear photopolymer stamp pads and not for the red rubber. So if you're using a red rubber stamp set like our Daisy is today, take that out. Now we also sell the grid paper which is fantastic saves you having to wipe off your gridded surface here all right so what i'm going to do is put down my piece of paper first i want to stamp on now i've already pre-cut this and it's five by sorry five and three quarters by four inches and i'm just going to place that on there line up down the bottom Make sure it is straight and relatively even. Right now, because this is a large stamp, I don't have room to put my metal or my um, magnetic holds. So I'm going to try and hold the paper in place with one of them. That grid paper, so it's not moving around. And then... With, with the stamp on the paper, I'm going to hold that paper as best I can, the cardstock. So hopefully it stays in place. Put my stamp writers down. Now it doesn't have to cover the whole thing. I just want a little bit of it sticking. So when I lift this plate up, the stamp's going to stay in place. Alright, so hopefully that's enough for it to cling there. There we go. Now I've probably had that crooked. I'm just going to move this onto here so that when I'm inking this up, it's not. this is not going to move. 
And I've used, what colour have I used? I've probably used Bumblebee. But I gotta, oh, what do I do? No. Oh, what did I do? Hmm. Hey, Fee, how are you? Right, so I'm just gonna ink up my Daisy stamp, Daisy Garden. And then, very carefully, move this out of the way and without moving that piece of cardstock, fingers crossed, right, down with the stamp. Even pressure all the way around. And there we have our background. Now, it's, it's a bit splotchy here which is not going to worry me because it's going to be covered with a piece of cardstock. This little bit here, I didn't put enough pressure on. Now, I could put this down, and that's the beauty of the stamp artist. You put it down so that you can re-stamp over your image to get a better image. The risk I have of doing that this time around is that this is not held in place, so this bit of paper could move. But I do have another side of this piece of paper, so if I completely wreck it, I have the other side to use. So fingers crossed, nothing moved, and I can get a better image. All right, I might not have even put enough ink on there. Obviously, let's try and ink that a little bit more. Um, so that's this little bit over here, this little flower. Go on, taking a chance, doing it three times without having that bit of paper secured. No, that's as good as it's going to get. There's something about that stamp spot. It just doesn't want to stamp. Let me try again. Squish it in that one spot. I just want that one little flower. There we go. That, like I said, I'm not going to worry about. So there's our base done. All right. Now that is just going to go onto the card base. So this is replacing on the sketch the patterned paper they've got here. So whenever you see on a sketch pattern paper, you can replace that with a, a background stamp or create your own background. It doesn't have to actually be a background stamp. You could use any stamp to repeatedly stamp to create a background. Now I just want to see, I, don't, I can't see comments which is really frustrating. I don't know how to see comments. I've got to swipe from the bottom. Okay. <laughs> Right, let me turn this around. Wait a minute. So then I might be able to see comments about having to get my fingers in the way. Here we go. That's better. Right, and then this is just going to go down the middle. So I'm copying this card and I've made that a little bit long. So we're going to trim that off. Now this is not raised. This is glued straight down. And this is why I have the samples this week, because I created these cards, these samples, last Thursday. So, you know, how many sleeps have I had between then and now? There is no way I'm going to remember what I had in my head planned to do. So I thought, oh well, let's just make the samples and be done with it. And I think the next person who orders might actually get today's samples in their, their little thank you. I'm right, going to trim that off because I made that a little bit too long. I'm not going to get the trim out to measure it. I'm just going to trim it with the scissors. Alright, so that now can go straight onto the card base. There's nothing else needs to be done to that. So how is everyone? We all good. If you're here, jump on, say hello, so I know that you're here. If you haven't said hello already. All right, so now I've already done the jar, stamped and cut that out ahead of time. That is going to go on dimensionals, but I'm going to color these flowers and these flowers and the jar are from the jar of flowers stamp set. So that's the jar and that's the the flowers that I've used and I'm going to keep it pretty simple I'm just using bronze for the middle of the flowers and I've already cut these out 
Now there's no um, dye for these flowers. So I cut them out just using scissors, it wasn't hard. And I'm not gonna do any great de detailed shading on these flowers. It's just literally to get some color on them. So this is Light Mango Melody. I think I've probably just colored a, a petal that should be blue. Oh, never mind. You know, I think I did the same on that when I was creating the sample. I was like coloring away and then realized, oh, hang on, that's the petal for that other flower. All good. All right, so my connection seems a little bit better now. I don't seem to be losing the, the signal. If I am, I apologize. It's like luck of the draw as to how good your signal is. And if some government somewhere, some state government or the um, leader of the company decides, to, I've forgotten his, what's his name? Anyway, he decides to hold a press conference, then my coverage is gonna go just like that. But anyway, we do what we can. So this is a dark Mango Melody. Do they know that like card making is therapeutic and we're much more important than the silly politicians? <laughs> Alright, so no great fancy shading, just adding a bit of darkness to the petals. Get a little bit of shading in there, nothing spectacular. I'm not even trying to blend the colours. Just add a little bit of colour. So if you have never done colouring with the blends, don't be scared. It's really not hard. You don't have to make the perfect blended colours so it's like a seamless transition from one colour to the next. You just want to add a little bit of colour. So don't be scared. Give them a go. So this is the light night of navy. So I don't know what colour these flowers should be, but this is what they're getting. And you'll see, I don't tend to colour all the way to the end of the petals either. I like to keep just a little bit of white tips because that helps define a little bit of difference in the colouring as well. So I like I've got the dark, light and then white. So it's like a, a natural blending without actually having to do the blending. Cheetahs blending. Is that all I've got blue on that one? No, there's a few more little buds down there. I think that's it. And then come in with a bit of the dark night of navy. Just where the petals meet the centre of the flower, because that's when you think of a flower, um, it's darker in the centre than it is at the um, edge end of the petals. So that's why I'm doing the dark in the middle, just to give that same effect. This one needs a little bit of a yellow centre. And then the green, I have light granny apple green. I love this green. I hope this green never leaves our range. It's a beautiful green. Alright, there we go. Simple. Now, I think that needs to be a little bit darker, that green. So I'm coming in with a little bit, just a little bit of the dark granny apple green. I'm just dabbing, really. I'm not even colouring. I'm just dabbing in a few places. So there we go. Our flowers are done. And sorry if you leave me comments. I can't see them. I can't see anything. No, swipe left to reveal comments. Oh, there they are. That's actually swiping. Oh yeah, it is to the left, isn't it? Yeah, uh -huh. done. All right, so now, and I've just noticed on this card, I've actually wrapped the ribbon around that blue strip. I actually don't think that is needed on the card. So I'm just going to do the bow. So this goes on dimensionals. So 
There's nothing hard about this card. Well, nothing yet hard about this card. I'm sure you can all make it. Right, this is on dimensionals as well. And that's my goal, sort of this time, coming on and doing lives, is making cards that are easy for anyone to create. This is a little bit more advanced, I guess, than a really super simple, easy ones like I've shown in the past. But if you just look at each element by themselves, each element is not hard. All right, just gonna pop our flowers right there, butt them up to the jar. Make a ribbon, make a ribbon, no, make a bow from the ribbon. Alright, grab a glue dot. Now when I trim off the tails, and I don't know if this is what other people do, but I tend to, most times, I'll go in line with the end of this, the loops, and do straight up and down so it creates that um, diagonal on your ribbons. But this time I want the ribbons to be a little bit longer, so I'm going to go out a little bit further, but do the same thing. Just going to go straight up, and that should give me my diagonal cut on the end of the ribbons. I don't know if I like them that long. Actually, come to think of it, I don't like them that long. I'm going to make them a little bit shorter. That's it, better. All right, and I've just got my sentiment to go. So, an easy way I do my sentiments is to grab a piece of scrap cardstock that's roughly the size that I want. So, that length is roughly, yep, spot on what I want. Find my sentiment, which I think is why I've got art gallery stamp set. So I'm just going to choose sentiments from here. I don't have a lot of sentiment only stamp sets. So I just, I don't know, it's something I don't tend to buy. I tend to buy stamp sets with images and then use the sentiments in those when I need sentiments. It's strange, isn't it? All right, and this is done in Misty Moonlight. So I'm keeping the blue and yellow themes today. But this card would look pretty in any color. It doesn't matter if that's upside down. I'm sorry if my head gets in the way. All right, so there's our sentiment. Happy birthday. Hopefully it's straight. Right, about the trimmer. Oops. Eyeball, roughly. So where my trimmer's going to cut is down that groove. And when I put the strip down, I want the bottom of my stamp, the bottom of these P's and the Y's, to be in line with the edge of this gap in here. And then I know it's actually a nice distance away from the sentiment and it's not going to cut off anything in the sentiment and if I've stamped it right the gap should be even roughly between the top and the bottom and look at that perfect and if you don't want to be bothered cutting little tails or banner ends then another little favorite of mine is just to do an angle so you go one angle now this one try and do sort of the same not always easy but there we go so we just angle the ends give it a little bit of difference not just a rectangle of sentiment and I'm just gonna glue this on I'm not putting it on dimensionals because I already know I have one layer of dimensionals already and if you're posting this card any more than one layer and Australia Post are not going to like it going as a standard letter. They're going to want you to pay 
for a large letter. So the minimum is 220. And I actually got told a couple of weeks ago from, sorry, I can't see comments. Um, I got told a few weeks ago at a post office that um, I had some letters that were on the cusp and she goes, I really don't think they're gonna go through. They're a bit of a force to go through. And she said, they will actually get destroyed and not delivered. And I always thought they chased you up for extra postage, they used to, but apparently they don't do that anymore. And they will actually destroy the mail. So that's possibly why in the past, some of my customers haven't received their thank you letters because I've tried to do the dodgy and put them through as a standard letter and they actually needed two or three stamps, unfortunately. So I didn't know that, they actually destroy them. So she wouldn't confirm whether they were destroyed by the machine or Australia Post just threw them out and destroyed them because they don't fit. So anyway, here's what it is. So now I err on the side of caution and put a lot of stamp set, a lot of um, stamp sets, a lot of stamps on my items. I'm just going to add a few metal pearls. Okay, my son and husband are back early. That's way too early. And just one down here. There you go. So there's my first card. Happy birthday. Alright, card one. Alright, card two. I try not to take forever doing these. Why do I have two in the same? Where's three? Okay. Alright, card two. So again, using the D for Daisy, because that's what our tag challenge is this week, so therefore that's the cards that I'm doing this week. Oh, I can't get that back in there. <laughs> Alright, so for this one, it's even simpler. I've got a little note written here. What have I got? Let me read it before it shows all. Could be a trade secret. Oh, okay. I know. Yes, okay. Right, so I have here four strips of the, what's it called? Misty Moonlight cardstock. A white piece of cardstock, which is going to get stamped and cut. A piece of designer series paper to back the design and then my Misty Moonlight card. So if I look at my card and where's the sketch? So this is the sketch as inspiration. It is just, um, they've got squares and rectangles cut and then put back together in a grid fashion. So I looked at that and went, oh, actually I could just do stripes of a design and that is what has inspired this card. So again, nice and simple. Now I'm not doing anything to this designer series paper. It's just getting glued straight to the card front. So this is five and three quarters by four inches, this piece of design series paper. It's getting glued straight to the card front. Okay. So, to create these panels, this white piece is going to get stamped with our delightful daisy, what's it called? Daisy Garden. Uh, D something. Daisy Garden. Let's move this out of the way. to stamp it twice so I'm going to move the paper over to where I think the stamp is going to go to cover this side and I might have to move that paper down a little bit right that's better so now I've got to find my pad just all over not worried about the bottom so much because it's going to get 
um, not going to get used. It's off the piece of paper. Mm. So there's one. Rub it all over. Get try and get a good amount of ink on your paper. All right. So now. I'm going to move this all the way across and I'm possibly going to have to move my stamp as well because I don't want it going over the already stamped image. So I could have taken this stamp off the stamper arms and put it on a large block to do this card. would have been easier but I already had the stamper arms out. I could also get out my um, simple chamois to clean this but the wipes are closer. I'm going to take this off. Line up so not too much is overlapping. Pick up our stamp. Go. let's close this for I end up with bumblebee everywhere sorry if that stamping is shaking the camera okay there we go beautiful oh, these magnets stick all right let's move that out of the way now I'm just going to cut this into one inch strips I'm going to start from this end because that's where the, the um, first stamp was. No real reason. I just think that's more coverage of the stamp. So that's what I'm going to use. That end first. Now keep them together. So keep them in order so that your pattern on your card is um, consistent. Like it, it flows. There's no gap if that's makes any sense whatsoever. Alright, now I think I've only got four there, yes. So this is spare. That can go into my little tray, my yellow box to use on something else. So we'll just put that aside. Alright, turn these around, put them in order. These pieces of Misty Moonlight cards, so I could cut the, the right size, so I cut that beforehand for each of these panels to have a little border. So these would be one and one and one eighth by three and five eighths. So this piece of cardstock, would, I would have um, cut it at three and a half and then I've cut each of these at an inch. These are just going to get glued onto a piece of Misty Moonlight. So people struggle using background stamps. So I'm hoping today that I'm going to give you a few different ideas on how to use them. I mean you can just stamp a card front with a background stamp and add a sentiment. And that's easy peasy. But if you're looking for different ideas and ways to use your background stamps, and I'm hoping today I will give you some different ideas. And these are easy ideas. They're not hard. Not into hard. Okay, last one. Now I've broken a rule on the design of this card. You are meant to do things in uneven numbers. So that it gives your place, gives your eyes a place to find the center. So if you have three items, if you had three things here, okay, you can easily see that is the middle. If I put a fourth one there, it's like, oh, I don't know where the middle is. Or you can go, okay, well, that's the middle, but it's not as easy to see. If I add another one, so I have five, you can go, yes, that's instantly recognisable as that's the middle. But I've broken that rule today because, hey, rules are meant to be broken. 
and I've used four on this card just because I could. Now, on our card front, we are simply going to arrange these so that we have them even, keeping them in order. And what I'm looking for is even either side. So what I'm going to do is put them on dimensionals. I'll put it, keep it the right way around so I don't get it on upside down. And I can't see comments, I'm sorry. But thank you everyone who's jumping on and watching. Now I'm going to put the first one on and then line up. Oh, I've got that upside down. That's upside down. <laughs> Whoops. Right, so I'm going to put the first one on, making sure I've got it pretty well even top and bottom. Right, and then I'm going to put this far side on and I'm going to match up or try and get this base here the same and then these two will be easy to hopefully line up to get the spacing pretty well even. But you know what? If it's not even, it doesn't matter. People are not going to go, oh, I don't like your card. I want to give that to you because you've missed lining this panel up. It's out by a couple of mil and you're just not good enough. Like, they don't get another card from you ever if they say that. Right. Um, hopefully, we are pretty much even. Fingers crossed. And these two, yeah, should be able to eyeball them. I just changed dimensional sheets because that one had finished. But I can't bother cutting off the edges this time around, so I'll do that later. Look what I keep doing upside down. What is that? Alright, and hopefully this one we can get even as well. Fingers crossed. So make sure this one is spaced evenly between those two and fingers crossed. Looks pretty good. So you can see the continuity of pattern across the panels. So it's just another way to use your background stamps. Now the twine I've used here is a beautiful blue and silver one. And this is my favourite type of bow. I just get two lengths of twine, hold them together. Oops, my finger stuck. To make a bow. Whoa! Help! Ah. Oh, 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 get over there. I rescued it. <gasps> Had too many loops and too many nails in the way. There we go. That's my favourite bow. I love doing multiples to make a pretty bow. Alright, so it's going to sit down there. And then I'll put my sentiment on. So I'm just going to use a blue dot for that. That side is prettier, I think. This side of the bow is nice, so let's use that side. ends. Alright, now we just need that sentiment. So, same as last time, grab a piece of cardstock, doesn't you have to measure it. Uh, find my stamp, I'm going to use happy birthday again. I think I've used the same sentiment on all cards today. Is that one of my hairs or a dog hair in the stamp pad? It's probably one of mine. Look at how grey that is. Oh. oh my goodness, that must be a dog hair. Not that grey, surely. I probably am. Alright, so sorry if the head gets in the way. You can probably see all the greys now I'm doing this. Goodness me. Alright, 
Happy birthday. It's thought of even. I really wasn't paying attention to that. It's off to the side a little bit, but that's okay because we're going to do our slopey ends again and you're not going to see. So I'm lining that up again. Something's crooked on there, isn't it? Yes, I think it is. Let me try and get this trimmed a little bit nicer because something is crooked. It doesn't work, I'll have to redo it. Yeah, that looks okay. Alright. Sorry, I just noticed it's gone a little bit um blurry. Sun's home now, so he's probably on playing a game. <laughs> Sorry about that. Thank you, Jenny. Alright, and now this is just going to get glued onto the panels. I'm not going to do the uh, dimensionals. Now I put my bow a little bit higher on this one. It doesn't matter. No one's going to get both of these. No one's going to get two identical cards for their birthday. How are they going to know? All right. So again, I don't want too many dimensionals. So I'm going to go through the post. A little bit of glue on where I think it's going to land on the panels, and glue that on. Fingers crossed it's straight. Right, and then a few pearls. Is that straight? Happy with those crooked. The best thing about this Tombow glue, which is why I love using it, and why I also use it when I scrapbook, is it gives you wiggle room. Now, I always used to use double sided tape when I was doing my scrapping. Now, I use that glue because it gives me room to adjust things if I put them on crooked. Just a few random little pearls. And there we go. There's our second card done using this sketch as our inspiration. All right, next. Ooh, we've done two. Let's get on to three. All right. So another idea, using your background stamps. All right, sketch number three we're using today is this one. Now you can have a look at my card, okay, here. It looks nothing like that sketch. Is that right? First of all, that is a square card. So these are card maps, not, not um, scrapbook pages. It's a square card. Mine's a normal portrait card. It's full of circles of different stuff, but it, when I saw that, I instantly thought of the spotlight technique, which is you have your stamp and you spotlight one section of it. Have I frozen? Okay, I appear to be frozen. What is going on? Am I frozen? I'm watching my replay and it's telling me nothing is happening on the screen. So I'm not sure what's going on. It looks fine on my phone. That is very strange. You're all good, Fiona? Okay, good. It must just be me then because it's frozen on my screen. I'm going to keep going. All right, so this card sketch reminded me of the spotlight technique. 
So that is what I'm going to do on this card. So you can use anything in a sketch to give you inspiration to do something different as long as it inspires you. You don't need to copy it exactly. You don't need to try and recreate it. You can use it to spark another idea, which is what I've done with this one. All right, so again, I have everything pre-cut. I have my card base. Then I have my first layer. Oh, you all did that the other night too. That's strange, isn't it? All right, so there's my first layer. It's five and three quarters by four inches. And that's nor that's my normal first layer for every card I do. It's always five and three quarters by four inches because it gives you just that little bit of edge around the card. Then I have this piece, which is going to be for my spotlight technique. Then I have the little banner piece for my sentiment. And I don't have a little sentiment piece, so obviously I'm going to have to wing that. Fingers crossed to get that right. Right, so I'm going to need these two. And my Stamparatus again. I'm going to move my Stamparatus back to the centre. Hold the paper in place. Oh, they cling stamps really cling, don't they? I love it though that we don't have to worry that your um, stamp is not going to hold to the block anymore. Right, I'm going to put that there and then I'm not going to put the stamp straight onto it. I'm going to make sure that it's lined up, which it's not quite. So I can just hold the stamp off the paper a little bit and then I can see that it's in the right place. No, it needs to come back this way. It needs to come go up a little bit. I think that is pretty good. So let's ink this up. That's really strange. I'm still frozen on my um screen. Very weird. I'm surprised we had internet though this morning. We lost it last night, so for a little while. Very frustrating. I was sitting doing some cross stitching. And I always watch, I have videos going on YouTube, Netflix or Foxtel or something in the background while I'm stitching. And then I was watching a lady doing a scrap page and all of a sudden she went quiet and went, gee, that's not like her, she talks a lot. <laughs> and then I had a look and went, oh, look, there's a little thing going around and around in circles. We've lost the internet. Ah, oh, that's the end of my stitching. Then I must well go to bed. <laughs> all right, so... We are going to, fingers crossed, yes, I'm going to, that little stamp far out. What is its problem? Let's just get, there we go. Right, now I'm going to mark the edges of where this piece of cardstock is because my spotlight technique is up in this corner. So I want to make sure when I stamp again, I'm going to line it up so that I'm not sort of stamping over here and I'm missing the bit I want to spotlight. Now if you notice, my spotlight, there's my card, I've buried it, is in a different colour. And that's the idea of the spotlight technique. Now some people will spotlight in that they'll do this in black and then that in colour. Or they'll do that in this bit um, color it in like if it's a, uh, a outline stamp and they'll actually color that in and make it really pop but I wanted to keep with my blue and yellow scheme today so I'm just going to highlight it in the blue it still works it's still a spotlight technique but again this is a really easy one to do and you just got to think about it a little bit more than just stamp and plop things on the paper on the card but it's not hard. And if you really weren't trying to conserve paper, you could just do two complete images of this um, stamp and then just punch out a section. But I'd already cut a little bit of cardstock because the Whisper White, oh sorry, Basic White's on back order at the moment, so I don't want to run out. I'm trying to conserve it more than I normally do. 
it's not like me at all. All right, so I'm going to line this piece up with my lines that I drew, and my spotlight is going to be in Misty Moonlight. So I'm just going to ink up the stamp again, Misty Moonlight. And I'm going to have to go with that because I'm not, hmm, I don't want to take the risk of not laying it up and I need to learn to put more pressure on it. Right, so now I'm going to pick a nice bit with my punch, this is my two inch punch, and then, oops, we can get that in there. Now because I've got a little bit of their section of the stamp that hasn't stamped properly, and I'm going to go as far as I dare across and down. And there we go. Now what I can do on this one, which I might, to cover up that that hasn't stamped properly, I'm going to bring out a blender pen. So a blender pen's a tool that's People don't use a lot. But look at this. I'm just going to colour this in. Picking up the ink that's there. Now you do have to be careful on the white. It will um, fall easily. So this is going to make it pop even more. Because it's going to be like it's coloured in. So blender pens just pick up the ink that you've just stamped. Just adds a little bit of colour. This is a good, really good trick to cover a few mistakes. You can't go over the same spot a lot with blender pens because it will make the paper go a little bit bally and look, the ink look funny. But normally you can pick up enough colour just to give a little bit of depth and colour. So there you go. So there's our blue painted stamp. Now this is going to go here. It's a little bit close to the edge, but it is what it is. I'm just trying to line that up now. My screen's still frozen. That is really annoying. Wait, I'm going to try and line this up so that it... Mm. Come on, I know you can do it. I know you can line up. So those two go right up there. There we go. Got it. I think. No, I haven't. Have I? No. Okay, this is tricky. Maybe I should line this one up. It's nearly right at the tip there. We go. Is that lined up? No, that's not lined up either. All right, maybe that looks bigger. Oh, because it's not stamped properly. That's why. That's why I can't line it up. All right, that to me is pretty well lined up. So now I want it raised on dimensional. So I'm going to hold it on one side. This way you're going to have lots of fingers. Be ambidextrous. All right, I'm going to hold that in place. I'm going to tuck one dimensional under there. There we go. Hold it. Once I've got the first couple on, and I know it's not going to move, because it is sliding right now. There we go, got the second one on. 
So now I can let it go and tuck it under some others. Because I can guarantee you, if I had to put dimensionals on all of that at the back, when I went to line up, it would not have been lined up. And then you've got to pull it off and it just never goes back on the same. Right, there we go. So there's our little spotlight. So where's my sample card over here? Okay, now that can go straight onto the card base. So you could do this spotlight in several sections of the design as well on a background stamp because they they are quite big. Right. So I'm not sure my card's the right way around. And Alright, so now I have to stamp another happy birthday. Grab my white. That is not long enough. I need to grab another bit. Yep, that bit's fine. I can trim it down. Alright, happy birthday. So you see on this happy birthday, on this, sorry, this spotlight card, it looks more effective because the spotlight is down further, but I'm not going to worry about that. It is what it is. And it's more just showing you the technique and I'm about to sneeze. <coughs> oh, bless me. Sorry about that. God, it's all happening today. Alright, so. Hopefully the happy birthday is straight. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, gosh. Right. Now I'm just going to eyeball this with my blue piece that I've already got. Oh, I'm so sorry. I want that in the middle. And I think if I just trim this end, that's going to look pretty well spot on. So let's just mark that with a pencil. And trim. Now this one I haven't done the little fancy ends. Straight on to that piece of cardstock. So the change I've done on this one is I've got it all the way to the end. That one, I have a gap. So it's just going to sit in the middle. No dimensionals again. I'm trying to keep it pretty flat. You can't really put a um, spotlight card flat. Oh, you could, I guess, but it looks good based on dimensionals. Right, another bow. Find my ribbon. Oh look, I'm back on my screen. Yay! What was that was weird. That was frozen for ages on my iPad. Wow. Okay. Oh, sorry about the sniffing. Oh. Stupid sneeze. That's when my bow looks better. Alright, and then in the middle of that little daisy, I went a little crazy with these curls because I think they're really nice. And they're not too in your face gaudy they're just a little bit of beautiful so I just filled the whole center of this flower with these little metallic pearls I might use that one for some of its coating I 
Nu ai putea mânca. So if you're here watching, thank you for watching and hanging around. Last little curl. Now I haven't counted how many is in there, whether it's an odd or even number. But isn't that pretty? I love the center of that daisy. All right, so there's card number three. Using this sketch as inspiration. So I've just thought circles looks like a spotlight technique to me. So that's what I've created. And the last thing we're going to do is our tag. And I'm using this sketch here as inspiration for our tag. And the reason, that's the reason I'm using the Daisy stamp set today. The Daisy Garden stamp set is for our 52 Tags SU Challenge. This week's theme is the letter D. So I've done D for Daisy. And since this is a background stamp, I also wanted to show you some techniques using background stamps. So I've done three cards. And now the last thing we're doing is the tag. Okay. So again, I've pre-cut some things. So that's our cute little daisy tag. This could not be any simpler. We have a tag base, a piece of um, patterned paper, on top of the tag and then we have this piece that I should be able to get the happy birthday and the daisy stamp from so this cannot get any simpler so our first step is to round the corners for our tag and I'm using our trio punch because it has a corner rounder so I'm just going to round each of the corners on the patterned paper windy outside. I can hear like a howling all the time. The other night actually we had a sudden gust of wind and out the front of the house the wind howls and it was just this big sudden howl and it set my dog off. It's like you're protecting us from the wind. Good boy. But it was like so scary this sudden howl. It's like oh my gosh. Alright so I'm just going to round each corner. Okay. Now I'm going to stick them together. Look at that paper. Oh, this paper is gorgeous. So for those who are here live watching on Facebook, I'm going to let you know that if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so because soon I am going to be putting up videos of my artisan projects that I've made. Because my artisan term is coming to an end. So let me just show you some of the cards that I've done for artisan. Oh. Now I have given some away, unfortunately I don't have them all. <laughs> but these are the ones that I have. And I'm going to be doing videos on how I created these cards which are all my artisan projects that I've done throughout the year. Now some of these are a little bit detailed, so I don't want to do a live because they'll be way too long. So I'm going to do videos um, and put them up on YouTube. So if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do. I'll put a link below. So these are the ones that, that were just on um, Stampin' Ups. Instagram and I think on Facebook earlier this week or last week Christmas ones and then these were ones recently went up as well 
So there you go, they're the ones that I have left. Now I have some others um, I've given away, but I do have photos of them, obviously, and I'm gonna recreate those as well. So if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, or even if you are watching this replay on YouTube, please subscribe so you don't miss these videos. They, they hopefully will start going up soon. Right now, back to our tag. So this punch also has this little oval here, which does your little hole for your tag. But how convenient is that? So I need to line this up. First of all, try and get it in there. Line it up so it's even with these pieces here. That's sort of the guide that I'm using so that I get it lined up and the hole will be in the middle. Push it in as far as it will go. And push down in the middle of the punch. Use a little bit of force because it's cardstock and paper you're going through. And there we have our hole. How cool is that? All right, so let's add a little bit of ribbon through there so I don't forget to do it. <coughs> fold it in half, and then because it's a little hole, I'm going to fold it in half this way as well to poke it through. From the back, pull the tail through the loop, and pull it gently. Oh yes, that's really windy out there. I can hear the howling. Cut your ends at an angle. All right. And now all we need to do is stamp our daisies. Now it doesn't matter where you get on this stamp, as long as it's not just down here on the leaves, unless, unless that's what you want. Now I can see where this is gonna stamp because I've got an imprint there already. So I'm just going to put my piece of paper there, ink up my stamp, and if it's not aligned right, you've always got the other side of the paper, so don't panic. Now I'm going to push quite firmly, because obviously I haven't been pushing enough on this stamp. And they've got a lovely shade of green because guess what, what did I forget to do? I forgot to clean this stamp after the misty moonlight. Oh my lord. I can't believe I did that. Normally I clean them straight away, but obviously that one I didn't. Oh no, lovely shade of green. Just as well there's another side. Oh I can't believe I did that. You know what my bubble beast ink pad now is gonna be oh. Yucky. Let's have a look. You ready for the damage? Can't see, but I know it's going to be. Oh, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> Whoops. Let's try that again, shall we? At least I can see where my stamp was going to be lined up. I mean, my thing. Let's put that a little bit higher, actually, because I wanted a bit more of that daisy. Let's try that again. But what I'm going to do is to try and get the blue that I know is on this ink pad now off. Oh, gosh. Who else has done that? That's just ridiculous. Yeah. Ah. All right, I'm going to have to clean that ink pad. So let's use another one. Let's uh, clean that again and go for another yellow. So there you go, lesson learned. Clean your stamps as soon as you are finished with them because I totally forgot that I had used Misty Moonlight on that stamp, didn't clean it, re-stamped it with my bumblebee and got lovely green daisies and a wrecked bumblebee ink pad that I now need to clean. Right, so let's go with crushed curry. It's a similar yellow. Fingers crossed we're going to get a cleaner image this time. Wow. I have cleaned it twice. I'm sorry. I know that bashing 
makes the camera go strange. I don't know how to fix that. I'm not going to buy a new desk. Well, there we go. Look at that. It's a very similar colour, actually. So, put that aside. And yes, I know, I haven't cleaned it. <laughs> Grab my punch that I've um, put somewhere. Here it is. So again, just using the circle punch. This is a bit like a spotlight technique. I'm just going to punch a nice section of this stamp. like that. Oh, look at all the green on the back. <laughs> oh, too funny. Alright, so that is simply going to go on there on dimensionals that I've lost. Goodness, this backing does not want to come off. All right, so let's get rid of that dimensional. Now oh, I should have stayed in bed. <laughs> Some of those days, and I've already taken them off. Oh my god, are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, yay, yay! All right, let's just get this done before we get any more disasters happening. Okay, now we just need our sentiment. Not quite long enough. So I'll do the long side. Now, I want it to hang over a little bit, so I'm just going to mark with a pencil roughly where I want to cut it. And if you want to get your trim around, make sure this cut was straight, go right ahead. And that is just going to get glued on there. Now I'm just putting glue in the middle because it does overhang a little bit if my glue wants to come out. Okay, so what else can go on today? What a day! Jeez! I realise I've got no pearls on this tag. Let's rectify that. There's no pearls on this one. What was I thinking? Right, let's put some pearls in the middle of this daisy because I really like that on the card and then you could use this card along with the birthday card so this tag sorry for the present that goes with that other birth the last birthday card It'd make a great set Now my pearls are not going to want to go on how I want them to go. They're going to look really messy. Okay. I'm sure it's not like Friday the 13th on a Wednesday or something. <laughs> oh dear. It nearly didn't come on today. Either. I had really heavy feeling arms. So I went, oh. just like couldn't lift them up. I need to play with these because this one is creating too much of a straight line down here. So 
one needs to go up a little bit. Oh, <clears throat> where are you going, little pearl? Oh, look, that's, that's it. It is what it is. There we go. Oh, no, I don't like that. Look, it's got a line. I'm not going to be happy till I fix it. So let's pull you down. Let's get rid of you all together. Come on. There we go. That's better. Stay. Alright. Sorry, mate. You're not making a cut. You're being misbehaving. Alright, there we go. <gasps> Finally, we got there. We got through it all. Oh, my goodness. So, to recap, you grab everything. Today, I have used these sketches, card maps from Becky Fleck, 2014. I've used one, two, and three sketches as inspiration for my cards, and this fourth sketch as inspiration for my tag. And the tag I am doing is for our 52 Tags SU Challenge. Let me write the hashtag down. So that if you want to play along, create a, sorry, I can't talk and write at the same time. If you want to play along with the tag challenge, create a tag, load it to social media with that hashtag. This week's theme is the letter D, hence why I am doing daisies. So I'm using the Daisy Garden background stamp for my tag challenge and also showing you different ways to use the background stamps because sometimes you can look at a background stamp and go, I'm going to get limited use out of that. So I've just shown you three really easy techniques to use with your background stamps today to get more use out of them rather than have them just sitting on your shelf unloved. So the first card we did was this one. And that is from this um, sketch. Then we did this card, inspiration from this sketch. So let me rewind. So for this one, on the sketch, they have what looks like patterned paper on the card front with patterned paper down the middle. I've replaced the patterned paper on the card stock with our background stamp. And then I've used a coordinate, or not a coordinating, but a stamp that, that ties in on the front to create the flowers on the front to go with the stamp on the background. The second one I've done is these four panels. Now this is just the background stamp cut into strips and put continuous, continuously, that's hard to say, along the card front. And that is from this sketch here where they have um, three separate lots of patterned paper to form a grid. So I've just used, sorry, the background stamp, cut into stripes on the front. The third card sketch was this one full of circles. As soon as I saw that, I went, bought the spotlight technique, which is another great way to use your background stamps. You stamp, sorry, you can't see the center on that one. You stamp the background with your background stamp. You stamp again another colour, cut it out and pop it on top and that spotlights that section of the stamp. So they're the cards and the tag that we did today. So if you want to play along, please join us in the tag challenge. We'd love to have you play along. The 52 tags SU challenge, there's two S's in the middle there. So post your tag to social media. You can go back and do the previous weeks. We've we're using the letters of alphabet as our theme. So week one was the letter A, week two the letter B, week three the letter C, and yes, this week is letter D. So I've done D for daisies. So you can go back, play along, post your tag with that hashtag. I'd love to see what you make. There's the projects that we have done today. Three tags and a card using this sketch. Uh, what else? There was one more thing I want to tell you about. I've told you about the um, videos I'm going to be doing soon of all my artisan cards and creations that I've done this year. 
My artisan time is nearly up. We're stamping up. I didn't reapply for next year's team. That was a mistake. I probably I will next year because I thoroughly enjoyed it. But I'm going to do videos um, showing how I made all those cards I did for the artisan team. And one last thing is the Whimsy and Wonder Stampy by Mail closes, registration closes at the end of this month. So that's only a few short days away. If you want to jump in and register, it's $41 for the class. You get the packet of the gorgeous Whimsy and Wonder Designer Series paper as part of the class, if you take the full class. And you get six project kits with enough supplies to make two of each project. And these are the cards in the class. So you get everything pre-cut ready to go. And you just need to supply glue, some scissors, dimensionals, um, rhinestones, and a sentiment step of your choice to add to the cards. Everything else is provided and pre-cut except the designer series paper obviously because you get that as part of the class so you will have to cut your designer series paper so you'll need a trimmer or scissors if you want to go that way um, and the instructions for what size to cut the paper is in the each project kit so these are the cards six cards you get supplies to make two of each everything's pre-cut so all these trees are pre-cut the tinsel's pre-cut everything's supplied like I said, except for the DSP that you will get as part of the class, your um, rhinestones, if you want to add rhinestones, some glue embellishments, and that's it, you're set. So sign up for that class, closes the end of this month, and then I'm actually, since you've hung around for a while, I'm going to give you a sneak peek of the next class out, which will be coming out um, the 1st of November, and I'm going to use the baubles. Um dies now with this one this is a bundle so there's no designer series paper that matches so i've used oh, i've got the name of it now marion something <laughs> i don't even have it here i've moved it off my desk anyway you'll get a packet of 12 by 12 designer series paper to go with these cards so these are the cards for the next stamping royal mail which will be released on the 1st of november if you're in my vip group you may very well see the sign up appear in the group before the 1st of November. And if I do that, that means if you sign up before official registration opens on the 1st of the month, you'll get a little something extra in your package. All right, so these are the beautiful baubles cards for the next Stamping by Mail. So watch out for that uh, registration that will be coming out. I will link it on my Facebook page when I've officially released registration so that's it for today thank you so much for watching and if you have any questions at all please pop them below and if you haven't subscribed to my youtube channel please subscribe and hit the notification button so you get any notification of any new videos added and if you're on my facebook page please like it and again um hit the notification to get notified when I come on live every Wednesday 2 p.m. Brisbane time to do some more creating. Thank you so much for watching and have a fantastic week. Bye-bye.